The dodge and burn tools are the last retouching tools I'm going to mention before we combine all of these techniques together and try to retouch a portrait from scratch. These tools you can find here in the toolbar. So they are combined together. And I went ahead and changed the keyboard shortcut for the dodge tool so I can switch between the two easily. I by default is set for the eyedropper. But because I just use the old key whenever I have the brush tool selected, if I want to pick a color, I thought the eye can be better used for the dodge tool. By default, you have all of these tools set to all, but this way it's easier to select them. So let me start with the burn tool. Once the burn tool is selected, it acts as a brush. So you can increase, decrease the size with the shortcut we learned before, or square brackets as well you can use for that. And it has an exposure value, which you can change just like opacity for other tools. So you can press zero, increasing it up to 100%, five would go down to 50% and so on and so forth. We have also additional options, but first I'm just going to use the default settings and just use a big brush, maybe even bigger than this. And what I want to do with this image is to emphasize the sunset even more. So I want to have a little bit more light on the girls in the middle and a bit more darkness around them. So with a big brush, I am going to paint over the edges of the image. So just around the girls, something like that, just very quickly, maybe a bit more here in the corners, almost like a vignetting effect. And then I switch to the dodge tool which is going to make details brighter. So you saw already that burn tool makes every detail darker, while the dodge tool will be exactly the opposite. So if I make this one bigger and I have it again set to the basic default settings, I can now paint over the center part and you can see that we can make that brighter. I can decrease the exposure by pressing two, I can set it to 20%. And instead of using midtones, which would just brighten up all the midtones of the area that I'm painting over. I can also switch to different ranges like highlights. Now, if I choose that and paint over the same area, you will see it will have a different result. It will emphasize the brightest details, which are the backlit details like the hair. So the light that's coming through the hair, which is a very nice detail. And that's probably the most important one to emphasize. So if I go back one step, that was before, and this is after. So just to show you the difference, if I keep using the mid-tones option, it won't really concentrate on those details. You see it brightens everything together. So instead of that, at this stage, I'm using the highlights to further emphasize only the brightest details. And that really gets us that perfect contrast between the background and the foreground and really focuses on the two girls in the middle. So to see how the original image looked like, I can go to the history panel and then click on the original image. So that was before and this is after. Once again, before and after. Quite a big difference as you can see but we still haven't made the most of these tools. So let me switch to another very common technique when we use the dodge and burn on faces, so portraits. Now, this is actually similar to a technique what we call contouring. So you could consider it almost as a virtual makeup. Just to make it easier to see the difference, I am going to duplicate my layer. Unfortunately, dodge and burn doesn't have an option to sample all layers, so they have to be used on a separate duplicate layer, or in the next example, I will show you another even better way of using them non-destructively. But for now, I'm going to press Command or Control J, which creates the duplicate layer. And then on this layer, I can do my contouring. So I can even call this layer contouring. Now contouring is usually called where you apply darker details. But let me show you a reference image where you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So that's where we have contouring normally, and that's the highlights. This is a typical makeup where the brighter details emphasizing the cheeks, nose, forehead, and this part just underneath the eyebrows. And of course, also the chin and the jawline. But here is another frontal example. Of course, this technique needs to be symmetrical. 
And here you can see that apart from the highlights and shadows or burning and dodging, this reference also shows that we should apply a bit of blush around these areas so on the cheeks. And that's, that's something also we can do in Photoshop, but with another tool. So seeing these two references, I can switch back to Photoshop and I can start applying dodge and burn. Let's start with burn, which is our contouring. So I'm going to start here on the nose with 50% set to mid-tones and I paint over this detail. Now already you might feel like it's getting too dark. She <laughs> looks like as if we burnt completely her nose. Now to avoid this, we have an option called protect tones. This is especially useful when you're working on skin. So I'm just going to undo these last two steps and I'm going to use the protect tones option. And with that, I paint over the skin. Now it's slightly better, but still too strong. So I can decide whether I want to affect the mid-tones, shadows or highlights. We can try with the same values, st still using the protect tones and 50% exposure, but now I'm using it on shadows. That might work better, a little bit more realistic. Again, obviously too much. I just wanted to see how it looks. And then I'm going to switch to highlights. Now, of course, that completely ruins the skin tones. So I think the best is still the shadows or the mid-tones, but with a lower exposure for sure. So I'm going to reduce it down to 20%. I think that's even more realistic. Yeah, something like that. Now we can contour this part here. So I'm adding a darker detail there. And don't worry if you overdo some details because you can always reduce the opacity in this example because you have a separate layer for the contouring. Another one we have to do is here around that line, something like that. So far, this is what we achieved. So this was before and this is after. Now comes the highlight. So I'm going to switch to the dodge tool. Once again, I turn on protect tones and I'm going to switch to mid tones, keeping it on 20% and using the pen pressure. I'm going to first paint over this detail here, then on the cheeks, on the other side as well, although maybe not as intense. So I'm just going to make my brush a bit smaller. Then also on the nose, we need highlight on the forehead, we need highlight. Here on the jawline, we need the highlight, the chin, and just below the nose as well, we need a bit of highlight. Now, normally in makeup, what happens after this point is that these shades get smudged together to create a perfect blend. And unfortunately, using a duplicate layer, that's something we can't really do. Because if we start smudging details together, it actually makes the image looks blurry. So all we can do is reduce the opacity of the layer if we feel like it's a bit too intense. But before I do that, I can show you that this is what we achieved. So that was before and after. Now, one last thing I would normally do also with the dodge tool is brighten the eyes slightly. So ju that's just adds a, an additional glow and you can even do it on the lips if you want to emphasize them. So that was before and after. So if you feel like it's too intense, you can then reduce the opacity up to the point where you feel like it still looks realistic. So that was before and after a slightly more subtle version. But now that we know the technique, we can also experiment switching between the range option, like using the dodge tool with highlights. I can go over some details a little bit even more, add some more highlights here and also maybe on the nose, maybe even the eyes can get a little bit extra glow. Tip of the nose probably would get the most. So I'm going to just paint over that part slightly more and the cheek on the other side, the forehead. So you can see you can go into and add some even more bright details, which makes the face more shiny. So we can see once again before and after. So let's see a last example using the same technique, but completely non-destructively. And the way this works is that you have to create first a separate layer. 
Now before we do that, just look at my layers panel and you can see that this image is already a smart object because I use the camera raw filter to improve the details, the exposure of the image. So I wouldn't even be able to use dodge and burn on this layer even if I wanted to. I would have to first go into the smart object, apply the dodge and burn on the source, then save it and come back to see it all together with the filter. But that's just too long. So it's faster if I create an additional layer, an empty layer, I'm going to call that contouring. And then I'm going to fill this layer. You can either go to edit fill or shift backspace and choose 50% gray. Once I click OK, it's completely filled with gray. But then if we switch to overlay or soft light, we won't see the perfectly 50% gray values but anything that will be darker on this layer than that or brighter will act as the dodge and burn effect. And overlay is a bit stronger, soft light is a bit more subtle, but let's see how it works. So you can actually use the same tools. I normally set them to mid-tones. So here is my burn tool first. Let's start with that. Again, I'm going to use mid-tones on that. So contouring on this part here, just below the cheek it then on the nose the two sides of the nose then we can also apply a bit here around the eyes closer to the hair also we can make these details darker slightly and even the neck just to add a bit more depth on the face and already if I turn this layer off you can see the effect which is almost exactly the same but on a separate layer and you will see the advantage of this soon. So when I feel like I got a good result on this, maybe we can add a bit more darker details there. And I'm going to add a bit more highlight on the forehead and also on the nose, here on the cheek, on the jaw, and here around the eyes something like that. Now if I turn off the layer that was before, this is after. And remember when I said that this is the time when you would smudge these details together if you were a makeup artist. Now that's the thing that you can actually do here in this layer because if I just switch back to the normal mode on my layer, you can see this is what we created. It looks quite scary actually, but what you can do is to blur this out. So if I go to the filter menu and choose simple blur, Gaussian blur, we can increase this radius even more if we want. So let's click OK. And let's see, that was before. This is after. You can see it's a bit more blurred. But if I switch back to overlay, it will still act the same. It's just slightly more blended. So blurring your contouring layer which is set up the way we set it up with 50% gray set to overlay, can blend these details better together. And of course, you can still reduce the opacity if you feel like it's still too harsh. And you can also reduce it down by setting it to soft light instead of overlay. You can see soft light still adds the effect, but in a much more subtle way. I'm going to keep it on overlay just to make it more visible. And I promise I'll show you how to add the blush. Well, the blush is very simple. I would use another separate layer for that, so another empty layer. But in this case, I would use the brush tool. And I normally pick a color from the lips for the blush, just to be in harmony with the face. And I use a big brush and, of course, soft edge, with an opacity normally set to 20 or 10%. And then what you need to do is to paint over the area where you want to apply the blush. So I'm just going to paint over a couple of times here and on the other side, like that. And we can change the blend mode of this layer to color or also soft light or overlay works for this. More commonly, I would use overlay. So let's see, that's before and that's after. Just a nice, natural, healthy blush on the cheeks. So if we want to see before and after, that was before contouring and adding the blush. And this is 
after applying our virtual makeup. One last thing I would do once again on my contouring layer is to brighten up the eyes a bit because they were just a little bit too dark for my liking. So once again, let's see before and after. That was before and this is after. And the good news is that now we are ready with all our retouching techniques to do a complete portrait retouching example in the next video where I'm going to combine all these tools together and change the look on a portrait completely.